Um, Chris may be saying the same thing because we're the historical people. But when the Tacoma Country and Golf Club was started, they didn't have any golf clubs. And it was started by Scotsmen. And so they decided, okay, we need to import some from Scotland. Okay. When it arrives at customs, they said, what are we going to call them? They called them farm implements. <laughs> and so I'm sure it had a lower tariff than if it had been called golf clubs. But uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, thing to learn about our history. And uh, of course, it's the oldest uh, club west of the Mississippi, established in 1894. So if you haven't been to the clubhouse, go tell them. Yeah. That, you're, uh, that you've got a special uh, permission to do that. <laughs> yeah. well, in your uh, proposed career in nursing, how might golf uh, relate to that? I and mean, have you heard of golf as a social disease? <laughs> <laughs>
the new meets the old, where the new is overriding the old old ways of the dynasties, of the warriors, of the kings. And it's kind of sad to see that the new age, the new era is trying to get rid of the old. Me, personally as a youth, I know I want to do everything kind of my way. I tend not to listen to my parents. I think all of you guys have experienced that at some point in your life. And today my three points that I want to touch up on the new China are going to be foreign relations, the economy, and China's future. I didn't know much about China, that just that it was large. The 2008 World Olymp Summer Olympics were held there, because I'm a big sports guy, and I followed that. But other than that, I didn't know much about China. So my first point would be foreign relations. And in 1972, at the peak of the Soviet-Chinese split, the Chinese actually went away from the Soviet ways, and they actually came to Richard Nixon and tried to establish not only trade organizations, but a more peaceful relationship with, with, the, with the US. And in that same year, the PRC, which stands for People's Republic of China, actually joined the UN, the uh, United Nations. And ever since 1972, they have diplomatic relationships with 171 different countries around the world and having 162 embassies in those 171 countries. So it's, it shows how far a communist country can go in being friendly to different countries and trying to spread not only its influence, but its knowledge of how they do things. Also in 2009, Barack Obama visited China to discuss economic worries, as we all know, the European Union, Asia, everybody's struggling with the economy right now. And world leaders are meeting with each other trying to figure out what can we do to help the better of the world. They also talked about nuclear weapons and the need for action against climate change. I'm sure all of you guys know China's industrial infrastructure, how many plants, how many manufacturing stuff they have and a lot of those plants produce gases, chemicals, which affects the environment. So they actually talk significant amount about the climate change, how everything is affecting what and how some things could be maybe cut down or changed in the future to help not only their, the, our kids and children, but also the people of today. The second point is the economy. The first economy of China was actually that based of the Soviet Union, where everything was together, no capitalism, everything was kind of sent, uh, in the center. And ever, ever since that, that split that the Chinese had with the Soviet Union, China has been moving forward in its economy. Ever since the uh, liberation in 1978, the PRC invested in export-led economy and has grown nine times bigger and is the fastest grown economy to this day. Outgrown the US, Russia, Great Britain, some of the, the bigger exporting countries, whether it be in cars, clothes, China is it's it's moving, it's moving in the right direction and it's getting big. And I was I already touched up on the point, China's economy produces a lot of pollutions, a lot of greenhouse gases, and actually, I did a, I did a reading on the, on the web that says this year, 2011, China actually shut down some of its plants to control their, their smog. I don't know if you guys watched the 2008 World Olympics, but yeah. you can it's barely see anything in, in Beijing, and they've been actually working a, a lot on trying to control the smog and control not only their own health, but affecting the world. <coughs> as you all know. The third point is China's future. I'm sure China looks to the future just like any other country, just as the United States does. They want to do something better, not just for themselves, but for their children, to make more money, to be more of a world leader, not in just exports, but also in helping other countries 
around the world. I know they've been doing a lot of work in Argentina and Brazil, trying to help them kind of get emerge as a as a good country, which is is pretty big. Also, China has, like I said, cut down on its pollution in, 2000, in 2011, and will be continuing that, I'm sure, throughout the future. As you all know, in 2008, the Summer Games were held, and wow, did they build some buildings there. Mm -hmm. It was amazing how much stuff they built, especially the Olympic stage, uh, Olympic, what I think it was, it was called the nest. It looked like a bird's nest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, the, it was just amazing to see. And as a new superpower is emerging, how will the world react to China? How will the US react? How will the neighboring countries of South Korea, North Korea, Japan, Russia, all these countries, how will they react to China? I know, as a person being Russian, I've read a lot that Chinese, people are actually jumping the borders into Russia looking for land to live. As we have people coming from Mexico up to live in the US, the same is coming up from China into Russia. And it's actually been somewhat of a problem because a lot of them are doing it illegally, not correctly. And it's causing Russia a lot of hardships. In my conclusion, I talked a little bit about the new China, the foreign relationships, the economy and China's future. Here I just have some pictures I want to share with you. This is the flag of China, if you guys have never seen it. Second picture is, this is Barack Obama meeting with the Chinese president. And I just a little cartoon here of the Chinese economy I pulled off of Google. If you all know, China's mascot or logo is the panda bear, just like we have the eagle here in the U.S. And he's running on a treadmill, and it, on a treadmill it shows, you know, marks up and down as the Chinese economy keeps going up and down, up and down. And to me, he looks pretty tired. And so I'm sure the Chinese economy is doing a lot, and it's benefiting, and maybe actually not benefiting anything from it. It all depends on who's governing governing the country and what's going on. So I hope you guys now understand a little bit more about the new China and what's in store for the future and for all of us. Thank you.